Welcome to this short training video based on the HEE assessment strategy, which is available on the website. This video provides a brief introduction to the supervised learning event tool, the medication related consultation framework, shortened to MRCF. The MRCF has been designed to help pharmacy staff, including trainee pharmacists, to develop effective consultation skills through providing a structured, validated, patient centered approach to consulting. It also integrates the trainee's clinical agenda with the patient's agenda. The MRCF enables supervisors to provide feedback to the trainee to help them further develop and refine their consultation skills. In the assessment strategy, the MRCF is one of the assessment tools that can be used to record an assessment activity. The assessment strategy indicates which assessment activities could be recorded using a supervised learning event. Supervised learning events such as the MRCF are a formative assessment which aims to provide trainees and supervisors with the appropriate information to facilitate and enhance further development. They will also support the provision of evidence that will contribute to the demonstration of the learning outcomes. MLCFs can be carried out in any patient care setting, such as on the ward, in a clinic, outpatient pharmacy or community pharmacy. They can be used for a variety of scenarios, such as pre-assessment clinic consultations, initiation of medication, medication reviews, and counselling medications. This list is not exhaustive and other opportunities are available in practice. MLCF should be instigated by the trainee and the trainee should ask a range of assessors to carry out MLCFs to increase their learning opportunities. It's important to encourage trainees to use MLCF for more complicated scenarios as they progress through their foundation training year. Examples of more complex scenarios include discussing adherence issues or complex medication regimes and undertaking a consultation with a patient who is having difficulties communicating. It's not about the success or failure when undertaking an MRCF. It's more about the process, including the trainee's approach to the patient. The assessor should check if the trainee is familiar with the MRCF tool and should explain that they will ask the patient questions at the end. The trainee should provide background information on the patient to the assessor. If a trainee gives inaccurate information during the consultation, this should be noted, but the assessor should not stop the consultation. After the consultation, the assessor should feed this information to the trainee for them to action immediately. Assessors should use their professional judgment during the MRCF. If a trainee gives advice that would lead to a serious incident or the patient becomes suddenly unwell, then the MRCF should be stopped and appropriate feedback given immediately. The MRCF form is divided into two parts, a table of criteria which provides an overview on the different knowledge, skills and behaviours that may be observed during a suitable MRCF encounter for the supervisor and trainee and an area to document details about the scenario, the developmental feedback and action plan discussed after the SLE and trainee reflection. The MRCF is divided into five sections. These are introduction, data collection and problem identification, actions and solutions, closing and consultation behaviours. The first four are the key stages carried out during an effective consultation. For each criterion, the supervisor can choose to rate the trainee at below expectations, meets expectations, exceeds expectations or not applicable. Meeting expectation is based on professional experience and judgment and so will be subjected to each supervisor. It is strongly recommended prior to undertaking any of the SLE tools that the supervisor sets out expectations with their trainees. For example, they may choose to set their expectation to the level of a day one registered pharmacist or they may choose to set it at the experience of a trainee at the point in time of training. This will have an impact on the rating scale of the trainee, but should not impact on the action plan and developmental needs of a trainee. It's expected that in practice, some scenarios will not provide opportunities for all criteria to be met. Therefore, the not applicable option should be used and should not impact the overall assessment of the trainee. Trainees and their supervisors should use the developmental model of feedback, which is designed to encourage training reflection. This is covered in the Introduction to Supervised Learning Events video. Please refer to this video for further guidance. Once the feedback has been discussed and the trainee has confirmed that they clearly understand it, the trainee and supervisor should form an action plan to capture future learning goals. This is covered in greater detail in the Introduction to Supervised Learning Events video. Please refer to this video for further guidance. 
slide provides an overview of the MRCF process and time required. Estimates of time will vary dependent on trainee supervisor confidence in using the MRCF, the sector of practice and presenting scenarios. For further information on the SLE tools, please visit the HEE website. A more detailed e-learning module on MRCF is available on e-learning for health. The link to the training is available in HEE Trainee Pharmacist Foundation Year Assessment Strategy, available on the HEE website. For further information on the learning outcomes, please visit the HEE Trainee Pharmacist Foundation Year Assessment Guide and Strategy on the HEE website. This describes the assessment activities, which as a whole are designed to provide a range of evidence against each of the learning outcomes. There are also many other additional resources on the HE website. For information, particularly on the learning outcomes, please do look at the GPHC Foundation Training Manual on the GPHC website. <laughs>